So as many of us in Maine know, it's not uncommon to see raccoons roaming around, both in rural and urban areas. Yep. Now, new research suggests raccoons that live in cities are showing signs that they don't mind people at all yep. um, and could actually become domesticated. Hmm. An assistant professor at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock began studying this after noticing how comfortable the local raccoons seemed. Scientists have previously discovered that when animals become domesticated, some of their features evolve, like developing shorter noses, smaller teeth, maybe even curly, na- curly tails, for example. In this case, researchers examined hundreds of photos of raccoons and found urban raccoons' snouts were 3.6% shorter than raccoons living in a rural area. So she theorizes raccoons may be in the process of domesticating and perhaps could even end up as someone's pet one day. I would not be super surprised if people had raccoons as pets these days. People do. I feel like people do. In the South especially, I feel like it's a thing. Uh, I know we are that allowed to say that. I yes, we're Southerners. <laughs> Florida, Georgia. Florida, so. Georgia line. Uh, and uh, I, I was listening to a podcast earlier today, uh-huh. and they were talking about how one of the presidents, Calvin Coolidge, had a pet raccoon. Oh wow! In the 1920s. Okay. So kind of a random little tidbit for you there. So I wonder if that is uh, kind of like an outdoor pet. Yeah. Like an outdoor cat. <laughs> right. Outdoor <laughs> raccoon. Um, I can imagine that they'd probably be a little destructive inside, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but, I mean, as they domesticate, it is funny. My first thought when it, they described, like, shorter snout, curly tail, smaller teeth, I was like, they're turning into pugs. Yeah. The raccoons are turning into <laughs> pugs. And the interesting thing is that uh, from – I read, like, the article about this study, and animals, when they're getting de- – like, when they're in the process de- of domestication, they, their snouts shrink. That's so, so like, in compared to, like, wolves versus dogs, like, yeah. obviously dogs True. are much – Shorter, I don't like, know why they snouts. just like clicked. Like, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing, right? Well, in the house, small, like with less capabilities. Hopefully um, so. Have you guys ever had like interacted with raccoons uh, before? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I um, when I was in the summertime at a beach house, at my beach house that I spent time growing up, we had Ricky the raccoon. Um, we, we liked him. Yeah. He, so. We would feed him. Yep, and I have a similar story. So you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to. Whatever. I, I, I have a similar story, though. We would go to, on vacation to the beach every year, the same spot in on the Georgia coast. Uh-huh. And there was a Dairy Queen on the island. And there was a family of raccoons that lived behind the Dairy Queen. They All wanted the some DQ. Had named them. We would go every day and give them French fries, and like they would just take it out of our hands yeah. with their little hands. I think they about are it all the super time. cute. They're so in cute. In terms of feral animals, I think raccoons are definitely up there. Yeah. So oh, cute. So adorable. Now, yeah. is it right to be feeding them? Probably not. Mm, but was, they I, was I 12 of... years old? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in a city, they help themselves to our food, so it's kind of literally yeah, I mean, apples and oranges. You they... know, what's the difference? Yeah. And living in Maine, we have uh, flying ones. The seagulls, you know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Christian. Okay. okay, well, on that note, we will be back in two minutes.